Well, our next viewer describes herself as one of the mini people. She's Mrs. Jean Leesley. Calm down. Okay, I stand there. Now, Jean cheated slightly. She came in this afternoon and had her hair done specially. This is a picture of Jean beforehand. And this is a picture, obviously, of Jean right now looking absolutely stunning. But one of the mini people, what do you mean? Well, there's nothing at all for people my size, four foot ten. When you say nothing at all, what do you like to wear? Uh, bright, with it clothes. In my age group, there's plenty for the youngsters, but not for the 35-ish. <laughs> what do you mean by that, though? Because, I mean, I'm 35-ish, and I, I don't feel that I should be wearing anything in particular. Yes, but you don't have to chop a foot off a skirt or a dress and make it look totally different and spoil it sometimes. It's okay. very difficult. Well, we're looking forward to seeing what you've got uh, coming to you next door. Go through there, and I'll catch up with you later. Thanks a lot. After the last time that Trevor Sawbury appeared on the programme, we were thrown a challenge by Martin Bumphrey. He's here now. Martin. <laughs> so, Martin, are you prepared to repeat the challenge? I am indeed, yes. And what is it? I've laid a £50 bet for Trevor. And to do what? That I will donate a £50 cheque to charity if he can make me look a bit more presentable. If he can improve on this. That's right. Is it much of a challenge, Trevor? Well, not. it's not the biggest challenge I've ever had, but I accept a challenge. Great. Willingly. OK, Love get it. going out back and let's, let's see what you can do. Thank right. you. <laughs> Some hairstyle there. Well, let's finally meet now someone who feels she's one of the forgotten 30-year-olds. She's Mrs Barbara Arundale. And again, Barbara, we're going to show everyone a picture of you before you had your hair done, which is right there. And uh, obviously the way you look now, lovely. But what do you mean, one of the forgotten 30-year-olds? I think there are plenty of clothes in the shops for the teens and the 20s and the 50s and the 60s, but nothing stylish for us in between. So you want something of quality, a little bit of detail? Yes, quality detail, nice, vibrant colours. Right, let's see what we can do for you then. I'll follow you through. Watch the camera and look at us in the left-hand side. <laughs> For me, well, all that's going to happen between now and Dallas. The uh, phone lines are being buzzing away. What I want to do, first of all, is to go to Bishop Stockford, where Karen Jones should be there on the line. Hi, Karen. Hello. Hi, Karen. What's your problem? Well, I'm a size 18, and I'm getting married in August. And I'd like to ask Selena if she can suggest anything that an overweight summer bride could wear. Oh, Karen, I'm sure you look lovely, by the way, I'm sure you do. But you know, this is the year for the big brides. We're into empire lines now, which means that they're cut right under the bust and they flow outwards. And Jeff had a little tip. He said, I asked him earlier about what, ha what would happen about brides this year. And if you're a big bride, this is ideal for you to tie something right the way around your middle here. To tighten a big bow at the back, it flattens you slightly here, but it also draws the attention to your back rather than down here. But the most important thing is to be confident and hold yourself high and say to hell with everyone because you're going to look really beautiful. You know that, don't you? OK, enjoy the big day, Karen. Good luck for that, which is in August, I believe. Right, let's now go to Melton Mowbray. Paul McCourt is on the line. Hi, Paul. Hello. Hi, Paul. Who's your question for? Yeah, I'd like to ask Jeff, please. Right. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hello. Yeah, Good. I'm all right. Thanks. Yeah, um, I'd like to ask you, I'm 16 years of age, and I'd like to ask you what boys of my age do for their complexion. So what, you're suffering from skin in that kind of in-between period, yeah? Yeah. Really, I think the best thing that you can do is, first of all, take a look at your diet, Paul, and not eat any junk food. Uh, what you eat is what your skin turns out to be, so watch that first of all. And also, get a pH-corrected skin treatment that you can actually put on every evening and do that religiously. And if you find that your complexion isn't improving, it's worth going to the doctor and maybe getting a special course of treatment. And don't do anything that's dangerous to your skin. Don't worry about it too much, because it's going to go anyway, and the girls are still going to be there. <laughs> See, it's, it's not only about clothes here, so there you are. Jeff Banks, the new agony aunt of television. <laughs> Let's go to Leicester now. We've got Thanks, Sarah Damon. Page there. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Hello, Sarah. Um, What's your problem? I have a question for Jeff. Yeah. Can you tell me why handbags are never included in your fashion updates? Every woman carries one, and now more men are doing so. And also, what colours and styles can we expect to see this coming season? I think one of the things that we've avoided with handbags is because they've tended to be really a non-fashion item. Everybody's been carrying carrier bags, 
big black sack. So there's not been anything very interesting around. But just lately, we've had a sort of resurgence of little 50s kind of pillbox handbags, lots of kind of square vanity cases. So that's the shape to watch out for. And I think we're going to be doing something on that over the next few weeks. Uh, and the colours that one should go for immediately is still stick with either black or off-white. But coming into the autumn, very zizzy colours like bright pinks, uh, brilliant green, those kind of very bright colours in handbags, that's to watch out for. Right, so Jeff is the expert in handbags there. Now, Jill <laughs> King wants to talk about <laughs> spectacles. Don't you, Jill? Now, maybe Selena can answer that one. Hello. Hi, Jill. Hi. Can you tell me, what is the current fashion in spectacles? Do you know, I haven't a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I tend to think people go and buy spectacles because they suit their faces and they spend a long time looking in the mirror and making sure that it, it suits them, either heart-shaped or oblong or whatever. I mean, I like to see spectacles that don't really stand out so that they're trans almost translucent and going by the colour of your skin and the colour of your hair makes you look, you know, whatever you want to look. But basically, I just think it's up to you, isn't it? I think national health specs are the in thing at the moment. The round yeah, ones. the old round ones, tortoiseshell and wire things that clip over the ears, they're the ones. You mean make. like these, Jeff? These one here, the phone team tell me this is what's Good in this. Lord. It's Pink Robin friends. Day. <laughs> it, goes, it goes with the grey suit, apparently. Okay, we're going to Bolton now. Rini Gosh. Hi, Rini. Hello. Hello. Um, I would like to ask Selena mm -hmm. what makeup she recommends for darker skins, especially Asian. Oh, have you got a dark skin, really? Well, it's quite dark, yes. Have you? Because dark skins are very sensitive skins, aren't they? And they're very fine skins. I know that one or two friends of mine, their skins mark very easily if they're touched. So you've got to be very careful about the kind of foundation you put on. You've got to make sure that the foundation matches the skin tone very carefully. And also, dark skins tend to shine a lot. So you've got to get a big brush and lots of translucent powder and just kind of bash it on <laughs> and make sure that you have plenty of it and, and handy as well. And the other thing, of course, coal for eyes, those lovely eyes that you have, you know, to accentuate them more and more. Lots and lots of things you can do, and of course, lots of products for you right now. So have, have a lovely time shopping. Huh? Right, Selena and Jeff, thank you very much for getting through all those calls. We will be coming back to the phone desk slightly later on in the programme. Keep the calls coming. 061-814-0424 is the number to ring. But I bet you're wondering how our guinea pigs are getting on. Here's Karen. Right, we've got our act together backstage and it's a mad panic here. Everyone's going mad and Antoinette's actually doing a hair job on Lisa right now. Lisa, you've had all your hair chopped off. What do you feel like? It's really, it's a lot better. It's brave. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking good. Now, if I can just take us over to Tim, what, what's happening here? You've actually put all everything on now. How are you feeling? Very nice, yes. Yeah? It's, it's, it's you've, you've tried quite a few styles, haven't you? Mm. What, what, what's the result here? Um... This is a little bit plain. I'm you need something a bit more, a bit more to jazz it up, so we'll, we'll leave you in the capable hands. This one's actually been a real problem because, Richard, you weren't happy at all, were you? No, there wasn't it's enough not colour. Not the bright colours, I'm afraid. It's what I wanted. So what have we, what have we found for you? Uh, spectacular leather, I think. Spectacular <laughs> leather. Model yeah. it for us, model it. It will be in a minute. OK, OK. Let's move on to here. If you follow me, as you can see, the researchers are going absolutely mad. They're like bumblebees on acid, and we've had accessories being thrown all over the place. Now, what have we got here? Barbara, how are you feeling? <laughs> Fine, thank you. Have you ever had this much attention on yourself Never. before? Okay. Never. Okay, let's rush up this way and let's see if we can cram in a few more. Follow me. Okay, now, Jean, you're having your makeup done. Can I just interrupt you for a minute? Mm. How did it go for you? Because you actually had a few problems, didn't you? Yes, it was very difficult, but we found something, as you can see. Okay, and you're happy with that? Yes. yes? Mm. And finally, we've got Trevor here working on the hair. What are you doing, Trev? Well, I'm frantically cutting away here. Are you going to do it in time? Yeah, I'll be finished well with the Okay, well, as you can see, everything's absolutely mad here, but we're going to do it in time. And this is the best bit, because it's, you can see people getting ready before your very eyes. It's not a kind of glossy fashion magazine affair. I've actually been likened to Annika Rice, but I feel more like Anarchy Rice. Right, now we were listening to a lot of your uh, telephone calls there in the phone in room, but uh, what we want to do now is to talk to our studio audience, which we've got assembled here. A lot of them whom have actually contacted the clothes show at one stage or another with various queries or complaints or whatever. Who would like to put the first question to Jeff? 
Don't be shy on me. Don't be shy. Lady here in the front row in the blue blouse. I'd like to ask, why can't we see more disabled people? Could you do a makeover for disabled people? Uh, it's something that we've actually got planned because we get a lot of people that are either disabled, spend their lives in wheelchairs. We had one from a man who's an advertising executive, spends all his day in suits and would like some hints there. So it's something that we're planning for a programme before we finish this run. So we'll actually be doing something on that. Basically. Right, OK. We've got a young boy, two rows from the back with the red hair. <laughs> Can you stand up? What's your that? name? David Tully. David. OK, what's your question, David? How much does it cost to be a stylish person? How much does it cost to be a stylish person? Yeah. Well, you can do it very inexpensively if you go to junk shops and, and dress. And that's a good way of actually being stylish, because that's like in thing at the moment. And at the other end of it, it can cost a lot of money, and I wouldn't advise it. I think fashion should be fun, so don't spend too much money on it. That's okay. my hint. Just casting my eye around here. Liddy, uh, four rows back there. Excuse me, uh, how do blind people you go about... This is, you're actually blind? Yeah, how right. do blind people go about choosing their fashions, especially for myself? And I'm only in a child's size, and I find it very difficult to choose things for myself, because I have to chop a lot of things off my clothes all the time. Right. OK, I, I don't think that because one is blind, and although it's a terrible inhibition in one side, that it should actually restrict you um, and I think what you need to do is to seek the help of somebody that you've got a close friendship with that can actually go shopping with you um, to advise you. And I think that what you've got to do is to build up some trust in a friend who can really tell you what hair you should be having, what your clothes should look like, and really enjoy it. And I think that you'll probably find it an uplifting experience when people tell you how great you look. Because you've got a smashing face, you've got wonderful dark hair, and I think you could make an awful lot of it. OK. Great. Have we got a Mrs. Yole there in the audience? <coughs> there you are, yes, Mrs. we Yole. have, yeah. Hello. Hello. Well, there's many questions I would like to ask, but my main concern is, why do manufacturers send out <coughs> such badly made garments? Now, since the beginning of the year, I have returned over £3,000 worth of stock, and in the 10 years I've been trading in hail, to me, it's getting worse, not better. I now, think... I want to promote Britain, but now I'm looking to Finland and Germany because they're producing such beautiful, stylish garments. I think what we've got to recognise is that, first of all, clothing in Britain, in my opinion, is less expensive than anywhere else in Europe. So when you go to Finland and you go to Germany, proportionately, the clothes are more expensive. I agree with you that the standard has dropped somewhat in Britain, because the number of people going into the industry has reduced by half in about the last 10 years. And I think that what we need to do as a country is to invest more in training more people, and I think that's something where the government could actually take a responsibility. So do you agree you get what you pay for? I think you get what you pay for, and I think that German clothing, for instance, is a lot more expensive than ours. Uh, I still think, on balance, it's, mo it's more expensive. Right, OK. Well, um... We've got who here? Little girl from Wigan. Little girl from Wigan somewhere, I'm told. Yeah. Someone's telling me. A little girl from Wigan. Hello, little girl from Wigan. Come oh, down. Great. Come, come down. down Can we bit? see you? Yes. You're very come down a Conscious by the looks of you. Terrific. OK, what's your, what's your name? Dawn Hines. Dawn. So what's your question, Dawn? I would like to be a cover girl in a magazine. How would I go about it? Well, I think what you've got to do, Dawn, is you're already quite tall. You've got a wonderful face. How old are you? Ten. I think you've got a little way to go yet, although models start at about sort of 13, 14. I think what you've got to do is look after your skin, drink tons of water, don't put makeup on it just yet, save yourself, and I think you'll be a cover girl one day. Right, Great. Auntie Jeff. Right, we've done all that advice. Good advice again. And uh, we could sit here and talk all day, but Selena's yep. working hard in the phone room. Selena. Uh, yes, Eamon, I'm here in the open air studio, taking all the phone calls, lots and lots of them. There's one here from Wendy Bell. She's rung in to say, what can she do about her hair and her complexion because she's pregnant and she says she doesn't seem to bloom at all. I mean, Jeff was talking earlier about women blooming when they're pregnant, but this lady has some problems. What I would do first of all, Wendy, I suppose, is not to worry too much about it because the more you worry, of course, the worse it is for your complexion particularly. And as for your hair, well, I mean, as I've never been pregnant, it's very difficult to talk about it, but I really think that if I were you, I would just tie my hair back and tie it, tie it up in a, a bow and forget about it. I'm sure you look lovely. Right, um, Debbie Burgess from Warwickshire wants to know um, what we think of the plumper figure. 
when uh, we're designing clothes. Well, again, just one colour, make sure it suits you, wear it from top to toe if it comes to it, and accent the head and the face. And I said earlier, Empire Line is coming back this year, which is great for you. Um, Mrs. Jackson rang from Sheffield to say she's five foot one and she weighs 14 stone. What do we advise? Well, you know, just enjoy it. You know, wear whatever you want to wear when it comes to it. Listen, I've got a phone call here. Let me just see who it's from. Hello. What's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer, hello. Now, what's your problem? Um, I'd like to ask you if, when you were younger, did you make clothes for yourself? Did I make clothes? Yes, I used to make lots and lots of clothes for myself. What, you... sort, what sort of clothes did you make? Everything from capes to dresses to shorts to trousers to everything. Do you make clothes? Yes. And how are you getting on? Not too well. Listen, stick at it, because the more you make and the more you try them on, the better you are. You find out what suits you and what doesn't. So you keep trying, Jennifer, all right? Thank you very much. And thank you for ringing us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And... Yes, it's me. Well, would you believe? That took you by surprise, didn't it? Well, would you believe it's just 12 minutes, actually, since our guinea pigs disappeared into the clothes show changing room. Now, I want to see what the transformation is like. And the first person we're going to look at is Richard Black. Now, this is what Richard looked like 12 minutes ago. What has he turned into, Richard? Great. Richard, how do you feel? Great. I think I've done a good job on you. They've done a, done a good job. I, uh, with the BBC's resources, I've been able to uh, get clothes where I couldn't. Do you feel a different man? Totally. Great. OK, lovely. Thanks. We'll see you in a second. Thank you. <laughs> right. Now, Tom Walton also had a problem, his problem that he was too tall. And this is what Tom looked like. What is the transformation for him? Tom. Very nasty. Do you feel a different man? Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, can I see you stepping out like this? Um, on occasion. And one of the lads at the station going to think? This would be a new line in plain clothes. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tom. <laughs> Very stylish. My flying the flag for our younger audience is Lisa Lyons. Lisa looked like this. No, that's not Lisa. That's not Lisa. We're having Lisa or Barbara next. It looks like it's going to be Barbara Arundale. Barbara? You look absolutely stunning. Do you feel a different woman? Absolutely, yes. It's been wonderful. Do you think that there are lots of clothes finally now that they've got to you that you could actually wear? Oh, yes. Um, finding them in the right shops, I think. I now know where to look. <laughs> so you feel a different woman? Absolutely, yes. Spectacular. Yes. Lovely. Thank, Thank you very you. much Thank indeed. Go and sit over there with Tom. <laughs> well, looks a different woman there too. Very happy with her look. Now, Jean Leasley. Uh, complained because she was rather on the small side and uh, she found it very very difficult to get clothes to fit her the right stylish sort of clothes let's have a look at her <laughs> Jean you look wonderful what do you think of the clothes that they picked out um, different plain but different what did they recommend that they were doing to you um, revamping me, and I think they've done that very well, don't I th you? I think the heels and the hair high have helped enormously. You look absolutely glamorous, Thank lovely, you. great. Thank you. Go and sit over there with Tom and Barbara. <laughs> now, do you remember Martin Bumfrey at the start of the programme? About 15 minutes ago, his main concern was with, not with fashion, but with his hair. That's the way he looked. Let's see what we've been able to do with it. <laughs> Martin, did we earn our 50 quid for charity? <laughs> <laughs> Which he paid for. <laughs> yes, he's pretty impressive, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's not bad. Right, he's pretty impressive. Yeah. Trevor, does everybody that comes to you always end up a Trevor Solby clone? That's what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Great, I'm not going to let him cut my hair, but it looks great. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank I think it's much. wonderful. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> Sure, you wouldn't get that done for ten bob anyway. Right now, now, as I promised before, Lisa Lyons representing the teenage audience among us. Always a problem. What way to dress when you're that sort of age? Here is Lisa now. Lisa, let everybody have a look at you. How do you feel? You look absolutely, totally different. I feel totally different. What it's happened when your hair was cut? I mean, were you kind of worried about it first no, of all? No, I was pleased about it. And what, when did you last have your hair cut by a sort of professional hairdresser like Trevor? Um, 
I don't think I ever have. Not by a professional, anyway. So it's the first time? Yeah. And has it made you feel a different person? Yes. <laughs> and what about the clothes that the girls have got together for you? I mean, um, could you see yourself going down the high street in your hometown okay, looking no, like this? No, no. Give us another turnaround and let's have a look. What have you actually got underneath? Because they, they uh, look like cycling, cycling shorts. shorts. Would you have dreamt of wearing those before no. the, the clothes show girls got no, to you? I wouldn't, no. Okay, and um, what about the future? I mean, do you, can you see yourself dressing like this from now on in? Well, I'd like to, but I don't think so, no. Great, no. okay. <laughs> Probably takes a lot of money, doesn't it? Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, don't all six of them look really great? <laughs> Now, I've just been told that the phone lines have been jammed for fashion advice. We've had a total of around 150 calls tonight, which is quite something. So let's have a round of applause before we go any further for Karen and the team who've all worked so hard tonight. <laughs> many, many thanks. Many thanks to you, our studio audience, for being here. Thanks to everyone at home. We'll say goodnight and see you next week.